Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a ruffled throw pillow. You may have seen our tutorial on how to make the long tall quilt. That's what we've got here. These are all Amy Butler fabrics. Really, really nice. I wanted to make some pillows to match. Sometimes I'll make a patchwork pillow to match a patchwork quilt, but this particular long tall pattern doesn't lend itself well to making a pillow. So I'm gonna show you how to make a pillow just pulling out a couple of the fabrics. And I'm also gonna show you how to make a quilted pillow using the same quilting pattern we used on our long arm here. So let's go over to the, work, the workroom and let's make the pillows. To make the throw pillows, I'm gonna make a 14 inch pillow. So I cut a 15 inch piece of the print I'm gonna use. This is gonna be the ruffle fabric for it. So I used three width of the fabric strips and these are cut five inches. For this pillow, I cut a 15 inch piece of the fabric that is in the quilt. This is the grunge fabric. It's got just a little hint of print on it. And I put it on the long arm and I quilted it in the same pattern that's used on the quilt. It's just stitched around the edge and it's just on some batting. I didn't line it or anything. So for this pillow, I'm gonna do a little bit bigger ruffle. These are cut six inches, the width of the fabric. So the first step is to make the ruffles. Let's take these strips over and make the ruffles. We're gonna sew these into one long piece. So I'm just gonna take the two short ends and sew them together. I'm gonna to use a pretty big seam allowance. And I'm gonna cut off the excess here. And I'm gonna do that for all these seams. And then I'm gonna sew it into a big long tube. Let me show you what I mean. Right now it's in one big long piece because those seams are done in the middle and I'm gonna sew this last seam so it's gonna be just a really long tube. So I'm gonna finger press these seams open because they make less bulk in my ruffle. So I'm just gonna open them up and use the back of my nail and press it open. So I'll do that with all the seams, then we'll be ready to ruffle it. I've got both ruffles sewn into a really long tube or loop, so it's one continuous big piece. Now we're gonna make the ruffle. So to do that, I'm gonna use a different foot. I have what's called a shearing foot. It's kind of funny looking, and these feet will look different depending on what machine you're going to put it on. So we're going to tighten up our tension, and we're gonna use a really long stitch length. I'm just going to fold this in half. I'm gonna start right where the seam is there, make the edges meet, and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch away from the edge. And as I sew, I'm gonna be putting a little bit of tension behind the foot here so that the fabric doesn't go through fast. Let me show you. So I'm gonna line up these edges. You can sew it ahead of time or iron it if you like, but it's really not necessary. But as the fabric comes out from behind the machine, I'm holding it back here. And because I've got this foot on, see how nice a ruffle that makes? And it goes really, really fast. So even if you only want to make one pillow in your whole life, I would recommend finding one of these feet that fits your machine. It might be called a ruffling foot, but it's more commonly called a shearing foot. Now I'm coming to the last little bit here, and I'm just going to keep sewing right over where I started. And don't trim these threads off because the ruffles will come out of that spot. So just sew right over what you already did. 
and then leave some thread on here and don't trim it close. You'll have to wait till the very end before you trim these off. Now we want this to be about as big as our pillow, which is going to be about 56 inches. And it's okay if it's not exact because we can put in a little bit extra ruffle or we can pull it a little bit um, longer. Now I'm gonna make the other ruffle and then we'll put them onto the pillows. Now as you're sewing, you wanna make sure that the bottom fabric doesn't feed in faster than the top because then this won't lay flat. Because this is cut on the width of the fabric, they both have a little bit of stretch. So you can make sure it's laying nice and flat and that it feels like it's folding even. You don't want to cut ruffle fabric on the other grain. You always want to cut it on the width of the fabric. I've switched back to the normal stitching foot, changed my tension back to normal tension, stitch length, nice piecing length here. And I'm just going to sew around the edge of the pillow top to the batting here. And I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam again. Next step is to fold this ruffle in half and I've just put a straight pin in at each of those folds. And that will help me make sure that I get half of the ruffle on half the pillow and the other half of the ruffle on the other half. So I'm going to find the middle here and just pin this on. And then this one is gonna go in the middle of this side. And that's where I'm gonna start stitching. Now you may find on your ruffle some parts that aren't as full as some other parts. So we're gonna line the edge of the ruffle up with the edge of the pillow here. And this part here, right where I'm starting, there's not a lot of ruffles. So we are going to want to scooch that up a little so that we don't have unfullness right there. Now we're gonna stitch right on top of our previous stitching. That's why I'm using white thread here. You're probably gonna to wanna to use matching colored thread. So we're going to make sure the ruffle is laying pretty flat. You're gonna to have to ignore those threads from when we started and stopped because you wanna leave them there. And stitch right on top of your previous stitching line. And if you come to a spot that's not very full, just scooch it up a little. You always want to put a little extra fullness when you come towards the corners. So just a little bit of extra there and we're gonna pivot. And we're going to turn the pillow, then we're going to turn the ruffle, make a hard turn there, and then scooch a little bit of extra fullness in there. So where your seams are, it always doesn't ruffle quite as much there, so you really wanna push a little bit extra in there. And as you are coming towards the last couple sides of the pillow here. You wanna see if you have about the right amount to finish the pillow off. And I'm just about right. If you don't have enough, you can pull it slightly as you stitch. And if you have way too much, you can scooch it in. And if you end up with way too much, you can always cut it and take that excess out. So that's not that big a deal. It's not a real exact science. I like to make my ruffles a little more than double fullness. So if I need a 10 inch span of ruffle, I'm gonna cut about 20 or 22 inches. We've just got a little bit left to sew. So this is the amount of ruffle we've got. There's a little bit of extra fullness here, but we're just going to scooch that in and it's gonna fit really well. Now we need to pin our corners down so that when we put the back on, we don't want have to have any of this ruffle sticking off the edge. So the easiest way to do that is to hold it in the corner and kind of twist it. So I'm making sure that all of the ruffle is sticking away from this line here. So I've kind of twisted it 
and I'm just going to take one pin and pin that out of the way there. And that'll keep the, this corner, any of the ruffle from going like that. We don't want any of that. So we'll do that on every corner. So again, kind of hold it in the corner and then pin all of that away. And I kind of twisted it so that this part is holding down that part. So we're going to do that in every corner. I've got all of the ruffle laying nice and flat. I don't ever pin this part, but I suppose you could, if you want, you could put some pins in here to keep the ruffle going that way. It's just that there's so much extra fabric, I'm not sure it'll really help. We will be able to feel as we go that the ruffle is out of the way. So I basically just smash it down a little. Now we're ready to pin the back on. So for the back, I've cut two pieces that are a little bit wider than the pillow and they're a little bit longer and we're just going to do a folded back here. So we're going to take one piece of fabric and we've folded down about four inches. So we've got about four inches folded down here and we are about five inches from the top. Now we're going to take another piece of backing and you'll notice I've got the selvages left on here. I like to use the selvage edges because I don't have to put any sort of hem on it and it lays really really flat but it doesn't fray out. So we're going to cover this one up by about two inches. I'm going to press it flat here and I'm going to pin right on either side of that ruffle. Smooth it out, make sure it's nice and flat and pin over here. And I'm going to do the same thing this way. I'm kind of making sure it's all flat and I'm going to put a pin in here. Same thing on this end. And you can put in as many pins as you think is helpful here. We are going to be sewing from the other side, so we'll be able to see where to sew. We'll have to take these pins out as we come to them. Now, even though this pillow top is not quilted, this is just a fabric pillow top, I do recommend that you put a piece of batting behind it because it makes the pillow top nice and smooth when you stuff your pillow inside there. If you don't use any batting, your pillow top can end up looking kind of baggy. So this is the side we're going to sew from. And you can see our previous stitching. And we are just going to stitch right on top of that or a little bit inside of it. And that way the threads we use to sew the ruffles on will be all hidden. So let's take it to the machine and get that stitched up. We're going to be sewing just inside this inner stitching line, almost on top of it, but just inside. So from this side here, you can see the ruffle and I'm going to have my fingers smoothing this out before we sew. And that makes sure the ruffle is all laying the way we want it to. So we're gonna slide it over under the machine here. I put the needle down so it's holding everything in place. And here is where one of my straight pins are. So I'm gonna kind of pinch it behind that. Then where the ruffle is underneath here, I'm just smoothing it out with this hand as I keep a little tension on it. That makes sure that the ruffle is flat. Now when we sew, we can have pretty good confidence that we're not catching our ruffle. Be sure to stop before you get to the straight pin. Again, hold a little tension, smooth out that ruffle. It's already laying pretty flat and then sew. I'm going to trim off the excess and I'm going to leave about a half inch. You don't need to trim it real close because the extra fullness around the edge helps the pillow look good. Now before we turn it right side out, we need to get those pins out, those pins that were in the corners. So here's that pin, just be careful you don't spear yourself there, just reach in gingerly and get those pins out. We know right where they are, they're in the corners. All right, now we can turn it right side out. So you wanna pull these corners out, make sure nothing is caught. So frequently, if you haven't made many of these pillows, you could catch part of your ruffle 
what I mean is it could be caught in the stitching. It doesn't look like I have any caught here, but if you do have some caught, all you have to do is turn it back inside out, snip a few stitches out and straighten that ruffle out and then restitch it. It'll be real easy. So here's the opening. We can slide our pillow in. They're really, really easy to make. So I'm going to finish up the other one with the quilting and then we'll see how all of them look. Here's all three of the pillows. Look how nice they look on top of the quilt. I quilted this one with a little bit darker thread than what I used in the quilt because I really wanted that pattern to stand out. So next time you're taking a quilt to your long armor, just grab a plain square and ask if they can quilt it in the same pattern that they're using on the quilt here. Really fun to make, really fast. And these might not go on the bed. These might go on a pillow or a couch that's in the same room. So have some fun making some pillows and they will really accent your quilt. Thanks for watching.